Hey everyone, uh, Bijan from PM Exercises here, and uh, today I'm very excited to have Shravan Shankar, uh, who is a product manager at Microsoft. We're going to uh, do a mock interview together. Um, for those of you um, that this is the first time watching the video, please subscribe to our channel at um, YouTube, and we'd love to have you watch some of the additional videos that we're going to be publishing. But let's jump right in. Uh, Shravan, why don't you introduce yourself before we get started to this mock interview? Absolutely. Bishan, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Shravan Shankar. Uh, I'm currently working as a principal product manager at uh, Microsoft. I've been here for about two years working on the Dynamics 365 platform, which is uh, Microsoft's uh, CRM product. And before that, I spent a couple of years in a company called Chewy. Uh, it was a pet retailer. And about five years before that at Amazon across Amazon Advertising and AWS. Awesome. That's great. And I'm sure it's not easy to get into Microsoft. You guys got to pass the mock interviews, the, the real <laughs> interviews. And we're going to do a, a mock interview today to see how okay. um, that actually uh, gets done by a Microsoft PM. So the question that we're going to do together is a product design question. Design okay. a market for older people. Okay. I'm just going to keep making notes as you talk. Sure. Um, and um, So it's designing a supermarket for older people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So before we get into the actual designing, um, there's typically a structure that I like to follow in interviews like this. And I'd like to state that up front only because it gives both me and the interviewer clarity on exactly what we're going to cover. Okay. Um, so the structure kind of goes like this. Um, I start off with some clarifying questions um, because the, the, the question is pretty broad right now and I want to narrow down the scope to know what I'm exactly designing. Um, then we'll talk a little bit about the users, um, typically who will be using this particular uh, feature or product that we're designing. We'll talk about some of their current pain points. We'll prioritize those pain points in a way where we think that we need a solution for them. And then we'll we'll discuss some solutions that we can come up with. And lastly, we'll we'll prioritize those solutions using some prioritization methodology. And at the end, we'll we'll talk a little bit about what we think are going to be the success metrics for this. And if time permits at the end, we'll just summarize everything in like a quick 30 second summary. Sounds good. Very excited. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to take about 30 seconds to uh, um, think through all of the clarifying questions so that sure. I can kind of define the scope accurately. Sounds good. And while you guys are waiting for Shravan to join, if you're interested in preparing for your PM job interview, check out productmanagementexercises.com. Okay, I've got about six questions here that I want to first clarify before we get into an answer. Um, the first one is, you're saying design a supermarket for older people. Um, and are we talking about a whole new supermarket that we're designing? Or is it like an extension of an existing supermarket like Walmart or something? Let's go with Walmart. That sounds good. Okay. Okay. Let's do Walmart. Okay. Um, the second one is um, we're when we say elderly people, who exactly are we targeting here? I'm assuming people above the age of sixty-five, right? Um, yeah, that's fair. You can assume it's over sixty-five. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And are we talk when we sorry? I'll go back to the supermarket again. But um, is the requirement here to make the current brick and mortar store more elderly friendly? Uh, or are we talking about building a whole new supermarket just to cater to this particular audience? Let's say make the existing ones more elderly friendly. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'm only thinking about doing this for the US. I'm, I'm not really looking at any yeah, other market fine. because we'll there'll be constraints. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. And what exactly is the, the goal that we're trying to do this for? So let's say that the goal is we want to get more elderly folks to shop in our stores and help us increase our revenue. Revenue, OK. OK. And typically, when we think about um, older people, uh, I'd like to think about people who come and shop for pharmacy-related products as well. Are we including pharmacy as part of our answer here? Sure, that's fair. Yeah, that's a good, uh, good hypothesis. And thank you for checking with me. Sounds okay. good. Um, last one. I think you've covered a lot of the things that I wanted to talk about, but I, I, I'd like to ask like an encompassing question here. But are there any constraints that you think I should keep in mind that I've not covered as part of my questions? I think you covered a pretty good range. You narrowed it down to the U.S. market, over 65, existing chains, including pharmacy. So I think you already got a pretty good set of constraints for you. Okay. Sounds good. Um, cool. I'm going to take about 30 seconds to just talk about 
uh, list down the list uh, the users we already know that it's uh, it's uh, people who are older than the age of 65 but even with that there'll be some variations i want to list that down okay okay um so obviously when we think about the users it's not literally just limited to people who are older than the age of 65 so that's obviously going to be a primary category of users mm -hmm. um and when we think of that you can think of people you, know, you can think of older people above the age of 65 um people who are older than the age of 65 but are actually independent and able to do their own thing so they they're able to come into the store they're able to walk around shop for the products that they want um, and on the flip side of it, um, there could be people who are older than 65, but are in the best physical condition. They, they absolutely need help around the store. They might need help even getting to the store. Um, and then, you know, um, help around billing and stuff like that. So those are some categories, at least, that I'd want to think of in terms of the users. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we talk about elderly, elder, elderly people, rather, sorry, uh, we're also, we also have to think about people who have some sort of disabilities. Right, so, um, so I want to make sure I'm covering my my base on who I'm who we're targeting, and like I mentioned before, it's not just elderly people that would typically be thought of as users, but um, you could also think of um, anyone who accompanies uh, the elderly people uh, when they when they're going around in the store. So some people need help and they have assistance, or they have uh, they're coming from senior homes, um, and they they have people around who can help them. So I would think of them also as potential customers. Um, and lastly, the supermarket chain in itself can be thought of as a user here where you're talking about the people who are in the store, um, some of the workers there, uh, the cashiers and all of them as well. But given the fact that this is a design question and we're thinking about what we need to do for elderly people, I'll still keep them as my primary focus group. Okay. That is that okay? Sense. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. Um, I keep, I'm, I'm going to keep asking you to give me 30 seconds because I, now I need to start listing down pain points for these users as well. Okay. For those of you who are watching are not sure how to answer product design questions, we have some good frameworks and a cheat sheet on product design questions at PM Exercises. Feel free to visit us at productmanagementexercises.com. Okay. I've got uh, a couple of pain points here that I'd like to talk through. Yeah. Uh, so when we think about pain points for the primary user group, which is elderly people uh, above the age of 65 with a variety of uh, physical ailments, right? Um, I can think of pain points in three ways, or at least in three phases. The first one is pre-supermarket entry or pre-shopping pain points. Um, here, effectively, we're talking about elderly people who need assistance to even getting to the store. Right, uh, they either need to be driven around or they have lack of visibility, so they can't drive. Um, they need some form of commute to to the supermarket. The second one is for even those that can drive, um, you might typically want to be able to find parking that's closest to the store and not somewhere at the other end, which will be rather inconvenient for them. Right, so just the ability to get to the store to be able to do whatever shopping that they need would be some of the pain points that I can think of. Um, the meat of the answer or the meat of the pain points will lie within their experience within the store. Um, so effectively, you're talking about uh, customers in this particular age group have difficulties uh, walking around and finding things that are distributed within within the supermarket, right? Like supermarket is pretty big. Things are not in one place. So they need they absolutely need some help to be able to get around. Um, the second one is uh, the fact that things are dispersed across different shelves. Some of them are at the bottom shelf, some of them are right up there uh, on top. And elderly people typically would need assistance in either bending down, picking up something from the bottom shelf, or actually they're not able to reach something on top. Or even if they can, it's pretty heavy for them that they're not able to do uh, much and they, uh, they need help there. Now, I, I mentioned this before, right, in terms of the fact that they, they'd have to uh, walk around. The fact that a supermarket's large enough means that they are not able to stay active enough for that long to be able to cover everything that they need in the supermarket. They Having to walk around that much is just, is just difficult. Um, they probably need some sort of a motorized cart to move around, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then they would typically like things to be kept in a central area so that they can just go pick up whatever is needed. Um, and for things that are not in a convenient location for them, they need they need to be able to call on some help so that they can get assistance pretty quickly rather than having to wait for someone to be available on the store. Um, and when we think about the end-to-end -end experience of shopping as well, right? Um, we also have got to think about checkout lines. Uh, typically in a supermarket checkout lines, how many of are open? 
are still going to be big enough that you know it, it can cause a little bit of an inconvenience for someone who's older to have to wait through the line even even self checkout counters are now you know a lot of us have to wait even in self checkout counters so we might want to do something there as well right and then once your shopping experience is done um, that's where my third phase comes in which is post shopping pain points um, even something as simple as putting things into the cart and then taking it to your car and unloading it in your car right mm-hmm. uh, or once you're able to do that if someone's able to assist you even then going home unloading it from your car into your house is another big pain point that people could have if they if they buying bulky items okay right um so while all these three different phases have um pain points that are going to be relevant at every stage i still like to focus on the in store purchase pain points or the in store experience um and that's what i want to model my solution on so if i have to think about stack ranking the pain points i'd stack rank it in terms of in store pain point being my p0 in terms of the things that i want to focus on and within that i want to like if i have to do a p0.1 or p0.2 i talk about the biggest pain point being the ability to move around in a large store or the ability to have more rice carts or something that i would want to target um shelf heights that are easy for access i i spoke about how they'll have difficulty in reaching stuff that are either too high in the shelves or too low um and they need some something there um encompassing all of that a uh, p0.3 might be to have a centralized area where they can conveniently shop rather than having to walk around everywhere and lastly is faster billing right uh, figure out a way whether we we either add dedicated lanes for elderly people or we figure out another way to get them to um, bill faster right um now when we think about all of these pain points let's start to model the solution for at least the p0 for now because that's going to be our crucial pain points that we want to solve for um i'm going to take another 30 seconds to list, think of some solutions and oh. I'll, i'll come back yeah okay so i've got some solutions here um and i'm going to give you the laundry list of solutions even for the pre and post shopping experience because at some yeah. point i think this might get relevant um and then we can look at how we prioritize it for uh, what we want to build out sure so we 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 just to recap we said that the p0 pain point that we want to target and build solution for was the in store pain points which is effectively getting a good ability to move around um getting making sure that items are accessible um in in the shelves building a centralized area for convenient shopping and we said something for faster billing so the first thing there is um maybe increase the number of motorized carts are not a new concept in supermarkets um so one thing i would want to do is make some investments to make sure that there are enough number of motorized carts to know to be able to serve all of the elderly people that are coming there for shopping we have enough data and analytics and in supermarket chains like walmart to be able to determine how what the foot traffic is going to look like and we'd l- I'd, i'd love to be able to do something there right so increase the number of motorized carts um the second one that i want to talk about is in terms of uh, the ability to access uh, items that are there in shelves right uh one cool concept that we can think of is instead of having things dispersed across various shelf heights and having to having to have the customer wait on someone to help them what will be really cool is if we have a vending um vending machine style um dispenser that you know that's attached to every shelf within a particular category that allows the user to just go and press a button something that says a1 night i want to go pick up this bar of soap that's on top or something else that's big right um if we can make some initial investments there this vending machine just does all the work for you and being able to bring things from a bottom shelf or a shelf on top and give it to you at a height that you can conveniently take and put it in your cart um the third one that i'm also thinking about is creating a separate area in the store that caters exclusively to older people uh, which has the most common items here and this is where pharmacy would be included as well right so something near the pharmacy that's exclusively limited just for people who are older than 65 and above and typically keep the items that that they would typically buy on a day to day basis right uh, we spoke about walmart like a chain like walmart having enough data and analytics ability to figure out what customers are buying and who's coming to the store and all of that uh, so we can absolutely put that analytics to use to determine what would be needed by the customer on any, on any given day for a certain age group and then keep those items stocked in those shelves and if there is if there is a product that the customer needs that is beyond what is available in that convenient area of shopping then we can always have someone in the store that's ready to help them go and 
you know, pick out that item from wherever it is in the store and bring it back to you. Right. Um, yeah. Lastly, um, the other thing is we can think about improving the technology in the cards to allow for automated billing as soon as you add them to the card. So you can just have like a, a, a screen there that allows you to do self checkout. Right. As soon as you add something, we determine what the weight is. We determine what the product is or the customer can just scan it there. And that tells you what your bill is. That way, what is happening is you're literally asking the customer not to wait in long queues for billing and they can just walk out with the products that they have. Um, and then in, in terms of expanding the answer, um, we spoke about pre shopping experience or pre shopping pain points and post shopping pain points as well. And one of the things that we can do is for a, to alleviate the pre-shopping pain points where customers may not be able to get to the store, we can think of introducing a pickup and drop-off service for elderly customers where um, they can, you know, avoid driving to the store and, and go facing all the difficulties they're in. Um, they don't have to worry about parking spots, loading, unloading, none of that, right? So there could be some service there. Uh, if we want to take it one step further, uh, we could have like um, order to home service that could be made available to these customers. So either they call into the store. If you're not very tech savvy of ordering online, you can either call into the store. Someone can do the shopping for you and then we can dispatch it to your home. Or you can do steward online where you just log on your mobile or your laptop, go to the website and then say what you need and then we'll have it delivered to you in a couple of hours. We can, we can prioritize the uh, delivery for these customers typically because they might be buying medicines that might be needed uh, very urgently. So we can prioritize their requirements first ahead of other customers who might who might want home delivery as well does that make sense yeah that makes sense okay okay perfect now uh, what i've also gone and done is i've once once we have all these solutions i want to prioritize it to know what exactly we're going to be building right and one of the most common methods that i've seen um, a lot of pms use across amazon and microsoft uh, is the rice method which is effectively reach impact um, confidence and effort um, and when I when I think of what we need to do, um, the way I'm thinking about it is the first thing I'd want to build uh, or at least make available for customers is the increasing the number of motorized cards. Um, the reach is high, the impact is high, the level of effort is pretty low. It's just an investment that we need to make. And it's going to actually improve the experience for older customers. Um, the second one is creation of a separate area for elderly customers. Again, the reach might not be as much because you already have mobile cards there um where people can go around and shop but not a lot of people want to spend that much time in the store so keep in uh, a centralized area while it's not super high reach it still has enough medium reach in my mind uh the impact is going to definitely going to be high and the effort is going to be low to medium because now you'll have to figure out how to move around things in in the store to accommodate for this but it's still good enough in terms of in my in my mind as as a number two priority item um, the third one is improving um, the investments that we're making in a vending style machine, a, dis a vending machine style dispenser. Um, here, the reach is actually pretty high because obviously not a lot of people can pluck out things from shelves up and below. Um, the re impact could could potentially be from a high to medium, but the effort is pretty high. So I I still think of that something that we could invest as like a P0.3 or something, and then investing or improving the technology so that you can have cards that automatically do scanning and billing. Um, that requires a high level of investment uh, only because you've got to invest in the technology, build out the software for that. Uh, but the reach is pretty high. The impact is going to be pretty high as well. Um, lastly, introducing a pickup and drop-off service or call an order or, or a call uh, an online call. Uh, call order service or an online service, sorry. Um, that would be something that we might want to think about a little later um, because those aren't really the key use cases that we're thinking about right now. So having said all that, uh, we've got the list, of, uh, uh, the list of solutions that we want to target um, uh, when we build the product. And now let's assume all of this is done. I want to start talking a little bit about success metrics that I think are going to be useful. But I'll stop here for a quick second if you have any questions for me. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to ask the questions actually at the end, but maybe we can quickly talk about sure. Sure. Um, the North Star metrics, like what sort of yes. North Star metrics do you have in mind? Yeah. So the first thing uh, when we started this conversation, 
you said that you want the goal of this entire feature is to get people to come in uh, elderly people to come in and shop um on uh, in a, in the supermarket and you said that you want to potentially thereby as a secondary uh, outcome you want to increase revenue so the primary metric here is still engagement that i'm thinking about because that's what we effectively want when we talk about customers coming in and shopping um so maybe things like daily active users weekly active users or monthly active users in terms of engagement would be my primary metric um and there you can classify it as the number of elderly customers who are coming into shop um into the supermarket once these changes have been implemented we want to make sure that that number keeps going up uh, compared to a previous timeline um and the second thing that i'm also thinking about is um average order value should be potentially higher than what we were seeing before uh given that it be made it a lot more convenient for them um and then um a, a csat number or an nsat number for for these elderly customers just to understand if they're if they're uh, happy with the services that we're providing and if it if we make shopping convenient for them those would be those three metrics that i'm i'm thinking of uh, in terms of north star um but in terms of supplementary metrics like you said we also want to track if the revenue for the supermarket chain is going up because we've got more elderly people coming in shopping um we also want to uh, think of the average revenue per user and when i say per user here it's for an elderly customer like i said we want to make sure that this is um, this is going up and the average cart size would be the third one that i'm thinking in terms of a supplementary metric got it that makes sense um thank you so much sure. uh this was really helpful uh first of all uh i'm going to actually give you some feedback sure think, first of all it was a great uh, really great answer like what i liked about it is that it was super structured you kind okay. of started out uh, by asking some clarification questions that really narrowed down the scope um you thought about the uh user groups and how even within the elderly people there are different types of um mm -hmm. people that was really helpful um then uh, you thought about pain points and really interesting kind of a like, customer journey way which is which is how it's supposed to be right you kind of broke it down to three phases of pre store and then you kind of imagine what that experience looks like within the store and that's always helpful kind of imagining right user experience looks like i could tell that you were kind of doing that uh, mm -hmm. as you're speaking and uh you decided okay now based on uh these pain points i'm going to uh, focus on a special part um of a, a special group of pain points which were the in store yep. points really helpful um you probably we listed the solutions you came up with a um, set of solutions overall i think it was great maybe a couple of things that i would have potentially improved i'll mm -hmm. kind of go through them really quickly uh, maybe on the on the clarification side one thing that you could have potentially asked is like uh, what sort of resources do we have like what sort of timeline okay that's good and i think you kind of asked that question by saying like is this an existing store or brand new because mm -hmm. if it's brand new it's much bigger than existing so um uh, maybe that's something you could have considered um okay. and it's interesting like when we talked about the users um you weren't uh, so much talking about uh, initially the user groups you were really talking about okay there are like kind of three three personas that are kind of dealing uh with this system right with this situation mm -hmm. it's the staff it's the elderly people and it's their uh, basically associates right right uh, really the users are the elderly people um, right. broken into three groups. So that was another thing I noticed. Um, mm -hmm. On one part, I was wondering, uh, and I'm sure um, you know you had a good reason for it, but uh, why focus on in-store, right? You talked about why pre and post is not so important. I can see intuitively why that's the case, but it's probably helpful uh, for you to articulate how you arrived at in-store being the most important part. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that was one thing that I kind of noticed. Okay, um, that's good. Yeah, and then when we thought about um the um you know the the pain points and the solutions, I think um they were all great. Um maybe a couple assumptions um from a product perspective, probably what the interviewer wants to see is like what product idea, right? Do mm -hmm. you have that's going to improve the experience? So if that's the case, maybe I would have um excluded ideas such as increasing the number of motorized cards okay uh, two reasons one uh it's not necessarily a product idea that shows right. your pm skills and two 
um, we're making the assumption that there are not enough uh, motorized cars. Right. So okay. that's, that's potentially fair. one thing I would have done. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, when, when you talked about the vending machine at first, I was kind of wondering, okay, that seems like a very complicated problem, the mm -hmm. solution, but then you highlighted the fact that it's actually very uh, difficult to implement. So that was very mm -hmm. fair enough. And um, yeah, I think, um, you know, the rest of it, whether or not we agree on the implementation effort uh, of like, for example, like having a centralized area for mm -hmm. the senior people, that's up for discussion. So right. Uh, you know, in reality, sometimes 1 p.m. would say, I can find a way of quickly doing this. And <laughs> right. would say, I can't. Uh, and it's hard. Right. So, uh, overall, great answer. Thank you so much. And I really liked your Thank North you. Star metrics. I thought they were very meaningful. Uh, okay. So um, I hope uh, people that watched this session uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I'm curious to know if you have anything to add in the end. No, I, I appreciate the time. Um, I, I love the feedback. I, I didn't really think of um, the fact that I should have asked about resourcing uh, at the beginning, because a lot of what I'm talking about involves resourcing. Um, so that that was good. Um, the highlighting of the in-store experience was the other thing. I, I now I now coming to think of it, right now, now I'm thinking, oh, I should have mentioned why I think that's the most important part. It helps define why I'm building my solutions for that more than anything else. Um, so really great feedback. Um, it was a great question. Um, it, you, it's very easy to go down a rabbit hole with questions like this, and you can you can think of the world for solutions here. Um, but it was good that it was it was time constrained and made me focus on the things that are most important. Awesome, thank you so much. And uh, for you. those of you that are watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel and uh, visit our website at productmanagementexercises.com.